AI is about to change business forever and nobody realizes it's coming. We're entering a brand new era. Now, the good news is there are a bunch of new ways to win that weren't even possible before. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the five shifts that I see coming over the next few years, and I'll break down both the strategy and the exact tactic that you can use to take advantage of these shifts. I know this because I spend all day looking at cutting edge AI and automation. I'm actually currently launching a new AI company every single month in my AI incubator, Martel Ventures. And I'm starting to see trends and patterns that aren't obvious to the average person. So let's get into it. The first shift I see coming is moving from org charts to leverage charts. The old world was having departments plus people and you had structure and hierarchy and people when there were problems, they just threw bodies at them. The new world is completely different where one person owns a specific outcome of that department, let's say finance, and then use AI and all the different tools from agents, to automations, to robotics to get the results for the team. We gotta stop asking who do I hire and instead start asking what can we build to add more leverage? So I'm gonna give you two very tactical ways to apply this to your business. The first one is in sales. The days of needing 12 plus people to build a sales team are gone. Now with one closer and then using AI to give that closer leverage, that person can do the job of 10 people. For example, the infinite SDR role, essentially sales development rep, can do outbound for that sales rep, can qualify inbound, can take phone calls, can personalize emails, can rearrange the calendar. The whole thing is automated through AI, massive leverage using the calendar so the sales rep's only talking to people that are actually gonna buy. The second one is marketing. Think about it, like your job is to get awareness or interest for your business. But the days of like hamster wheel marketing and trying to just do a bunch of tasks are gone. Now you can actually use AI to identify what content you should be creating. It can create the outlines for you to create. It can generate the emails, the copy, the campaigns, the whole thing all done for you automatically. The best part, better than you or your team could have ever done. Why? Because it's looked at all the information from the top people in the world to curate it and personalize it just for you to speak to your ideal customer. It is wild. If you want a next level hack in the future, instead of hiring IT people to do like software tech and workflow stuff, you're just gonna hire an AI ops person. We have this person in every one of my companies. Their focus is making sure that the team is getting so much time back, getting rid of busy work, not working on jobs, but actually directing, which is my next point. That's where you're gonna get massive leverage for that hire. Get away from the people, start looking at the AI process. And on that note, if you want my internal AI company operating system that walks you through exactly how I implement AI in every department, just click the link below and I'll send you a full detailed document. The second shift I see coming is going from doer to director. The reason AI doesn't blow people's minds to the level it should is because they don't know how to use it. They don't know how to direct it. They don't know how to craft it. In the old world, you spent only about 10% of your time talking with team about like vision and creative solutions and ideas and kind of like pushing the art form. And then 90% of your time sitting there doing the work. Think about it for my executive assistant. She used to spend 90% of her time just processing my inbox and adding stuff to the calendar and coordinating things with other people and doing massive research projects. Now in this new world, it's flipped. 80, 90% of my team's time is on directing. It's trying to understand what is freaking possible. When you look at the automations, the agents, the connectors, these things are taking care of the last mile of actually executing and booking stuff and coordinating things, not just the creative output. That new world is changing the way you work with your team. I have friends today that have hundreds of people that work for them at a call center. Those jobs are going the way. If you haven't seen figure two, the robot that sits there at the UPS store, sorts through packages, flattens it for the scanning, that's today. Actually, that's six months ago. The future is being a director of what's possible, not doing the actual work. And those companies are gonna be massively disrupted. If you wanna adapt in this new world to go from like doer to director, you have to look at your whole business through the lens of a director. Think about a movie director. How does he look at the thing he's creating, get the players involved, the resources, the set designs, the actors. He's designing the world that that movie gets played in. Your business is no different and being a director is how we compete in the new world. The third shift I see coming is going from feature-based moats to database moats. 
A moat essentially protects you. Think of a castle in the middle of a field. It's got a moat around it because it needs to protect itself from the bad guys coming in to try to take the castle. Just like the water around the castle is your moat, the future is data. In the old world, you would compete on features. You would launch something, your competitor would have three to six months to copy you. And that was the rat race that you got stuck into. The future, since the AI can actually build the features faster than you could ever think of them, is that the proprietary data of how you do your business or what you collect about your customer and using that to inform the AI to learn faster, to create feedback loops, that is the competitive advantage. It's not about what you deliver, the features, it's about how you deliver it so that your customer can trust that you're the innovator in the space. I don't know if you've noticed this, but ChatGPT 5 gets better the more you use it. What it's realized is that if we collect the information, the memory, the preferences of the person who's chatting with it and use that as an injection to the future prompts, the outputs are so freaking good. Your business needs to do the same thing. As customers interact with you, you need to collect those preferences. You have to save them. For example, my buddy, Matt, he built a whole company around this. It's called precision.co. And what you do is you plug in your different data sets, your Stripe account, your marketing, your CRM, your sales data. And then it looks at your data plus the benchmarks in your industry, makes a list of priorities based on the theory of constraints, and then tells you exactly what projects to go execute with your team to unlock the bottlenecks in your business. It's changing everything in regards to intelligent business analysis. So this is exactly how you build a database moat in three steps. The first one is you have to clean up all your data. Essentially, garbage in, garbage out. If you don't sit down and start making sure that all your customer data is clean, there's no duplicates, it's accurate, then you can't feed that to the AI. The worst thing is having no data. The second worst thing is having bad data. Next, you have to use AI to analyze your data and make correlations. In one of my companies, I have a process where people submit an intake form to then drive the experience for the customer. So we take all the data they gave us to design a custom onboarding experience based on what they told us, based on who they are, based on all the public data, so that when they come in, they think, oh my gosh, how did they do this so quick? AI. And last but not least, you have to have AI suggest next steps you should take in your business to fix the current bottleneck. The cool part about what I'm sharing with you is you can use AI to analyze your situation, to figure out what you need to work on, to tell you what are the next steps for you to build a data moat around your business. Real data-driven decisions is how you compete in the world. In a world where information is literally a commodity and never more so than now, the ultimate advantage is data. Shift number four the autonomous back office. In the old world, you had finance and HR and legal as full-time positions. In the new world, they're for AI. They're literally policy-driven agents that take the request, execute the work, close the loop, reply to everybody on your team with no bottlenecks. In the past, when I sent a contract over to my legal department, I had to wait until that person had the time to review it to give me the red lines. Now I have an AI agent that does it for me in real time. If you wanna do this for yourself and we can use finance as an example, it's pretty simple. First, you gotta connect all your financial data, as much context as you can give the AI so that it knows about your situation. So there's a tool like hellofrank.ai that's a financial analysis where you just connect your financial systems and all tools and it will do all this heavy lifting for you so you don't need to know how to write the system prompts and then it runs in the background monitoring, auditing, giving you reports in real time. And then next, you have to let leaders audit for exception. So it's not that the AI will do it automatically and nobody checks it, is that it'll do 98% of it and then leaders still look at it to troubleshoot it to make sure it didn't hallucinate because AI will do that. And then everything else closes itself. So here's a quick hack for you to like implement this into your business today. You need to use some kind of automation tool like Make or Zapier or something like that. But essentially, you codify the rules within your business. So if it's HR and recruiting, write down all the rules about what the person needs to look like and how you should hire them and all the processes. And you do that as a system prompt. I actually have a complete training on how you can do that. I'll link it below in the description. That's my chat GPT masterclass that goes into this and a bunch of other cool things. The way I think about it is this. Exceptions deserve people, patterns deserve code. Repeatable, scalable systems. The last shift I see coming is going from development advantage to distribution advantage. See, the old world was about building the biggest development teams, the smartest people, coding stuff. Today, it's about distribution. The doing of the business is no longer hard. 
You're like, oh, well, I've got 17 years experience in this industry. Nobody gives a shit. Well, I know how to code really advanced algorithms. Nobody gives a shit. All of these things are now done by 12 year olds using AI. The other day I saw an ad by a product called Lovable where it had a kid in the ad build an app and deploy it and start monetizing it. It took everything, the database, the interface, the whole workflow and logic. I guess I'm an engineer now. Sure. And the cool part is he built it all through voice. He talked it, he didn't type anything. See, AI is the first technology that's coded in English, which makes it available to every human on earth. That is completely different. It's why I built Martel Ventures on the back of my personal brand. See, I've partnered to build AI tools with some of the smartest CEOs in my network and launch them through audiences like YouTube, my email list, my online community, and other partners all around the world. See, these tools are world-class. They're the best of the best. It's what I use inside my companies. But what really moves the valuation of those businesses is access to distribution, people buying eyeballs on those tools, not the code. This is a three-step example of how I do this myself at Martel Ventures that you can copy and paste. First, we need to build distribution into the business model. Just pick a lane. I don't care if it's organic content, ads, partnerships, but you gotta grow one own channel, you know, email, SMS, community, every freaking week. Next, we have to attach a brand to a clear problem. If you don't identify the ideal customer profile, their specific pain, and make a massive clear promise, essentially like in 72 hours, you'll get X result, then the person doesn't know how you can help them. So you have to make your story about the outcome, not the features. And the last is you gotta pre-sell the tool. Before you stop and invest a ton of money and time into getting the product live, you can actually pre-sell it to the customers that you wanna to talk to. That process that seems hard, well, how do I get in front of them is the problem you gotta solve if you have the product. So just flip it, start by pre-selling it even if it's not ready so that you can get the revenue to fund the development. This is how crowdfunding has worked. It's literally a multi-billion dollar market. This is how a lot of companies you use today started by going and getting the customer commitments, then delivering on the product. And it actually de-risked the business so that it's a better business model. And it's why I do it every time. Now, if you want to hack, the best way to get distribution is to find somebody, a partner that already has that audience built in. Think about it. They could have spent the last 10 years building their email list, their brand, their audience, their social media, and you come in with a great product or service and you partner with them and give them a piece of that revenue for them to promote it to their audience. Think of every online creator right now that does brand deals. They've built the audience, they do a brand deal with a product, they promote the product, the brand wins, the creator wins. Just do it for yourself. If you don't have a brand, invest there first. But if you have a product, go find somebody with a brand and partner with them. Here's the deal. When anyone can build, the edge is who can reach. If you're skeptical, you don't think you're technical, you think this is beyond your means, I get it. If you're worried about replacing people that you've had on your team for a long time that you really care about, I get that too. See, I don't think it's about removing parts of a job that somebody is doing or removing people. I think it's getting rid of they don't wanna do. When I think about what AI is gonna have a hard time disrupting, things like vision, taste what's good, caring about people. If anything, these tools are gonna give us the time to focus on the things that it can't disrupt, the humanity of it, that's gonna allow your team to feel like artists and creators and get more done and make more money. And unfortunately, if you decide not to do it, somebody will do it to you. So don't sit on this. See, AI won't take your job, but somebody using AI will. As a reminder, if you want my internal copy of how I've implemented AI into every business to get massive results, revenue, productivity, decrease the amount of time it takes to deploy results in your business, click the link below. It's the first link in the description and I'll send it over. It's short, concise, and it's gonna get you wins right away. Now, if you wanna learn how to get ahead of 99% of the people using AI, like I said, it's a masterclass chat GPT. Click the video and I'll see you on the other side.